Hey folks, welcome back. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, start setting up our cameras. As we setting up our cameras, there is a good possibility that we have to change uh, our different plane effectors and their behavior and functionality and their keys and animation and stuff like that just to get the uh, look much more better. So let's me uh, go uh, started, uh, go get started, and uh, let me create a simple camera. This is gonna be our first camera. Everybody has its own approach and workflow when the time comes to setting up our cameras. Uh, mine uh, is to I create uh, my cameras, uh, you know, uh, sequentially. So I create my first camera for, for example, frame zero to fifty. Then I create the second camera, for example, frame. 40 to uh, 70 and this is the way it's uh, gonna be there and I'm gonna name them uh, based on the frame that they are representing so let's go to our first camera this is gonna be our first camera and uh, with this camera I wanna uh, sort of uh, this camera is dedicated to our first movement and first burst uh, which uh, let's just uh, setting up our scene uh, what I'm going to do is uh, to go to this main cloner setup and instead of going this uh, changing the detail of our scene up from here what I can do because most of the time I want to uh, make sure that the level of detail of this main cloner is not that uh, much so we can have a snappy viewport uh, let's simply right click on this cinema 4d tags and you have this display tags uh, down here you can uh, enable the level of detail and change the level of detail based on percentage here instead of going up there and uh, it is uh, specific to this cloner and uh, also you can use the textures uh, and if I change this to something like quick shading for example or quick shading lines uh, it's okay now we can simply if you want change this level of detail for example to something like 20% if the time needs to be let's go something like 50% for the moment and go setting up our cameras and uh, let's just make sure we can see our now uh, let's go to this constant shading lines looks like the best thing for the moment so let's uh, go ahead and set up our first camera let's go into our camera and start uh, setting it up the first thing I wanna uh, for this uh, first two camera uh, I wanna go to a really uh, super wide uh, angle something like 15 12 even uh, so let's just change this uh, focal length something like 15 so now we have a really super wide lens and now let's just set up our cameras I'm just going to uh, trying to create some sort of really weird angles always try to do that uh, in order to have some nice motion and uh, really people appreciate those weird and uh, wide angles especially when it uh, when time comes to motion graphics and let me go to its coordinates and start rotating this camera uh, let's see what we can get here and let's see if we can get back a bit alt and right click just to make sure we have as much as we can in our okay in our view something like this for me isn't too bad and if I hit play okay so it's not too bad definitely frame 32 I think we are gonna need to go to something about frame 60 would be enough 60 uh, or yeah 60 is quite good let's just have a quick render and see how our camera uh, looks I'm just going to this uh, texture tag and uh, just uh, disable this so just uh, let's now take a quick render and as always I stop uh, my recording as I render and uh, I think we have a very nice weird angle the uh, lens is very nice and uh, we can uh, call this camera our first camera and the way I do this it's really simply let's camera uh, one and the frames are 0 to 60 so this is our first camera and uh, I saw a problem I'm not sure if you 
noticed it or not but let's go back to our uh, default camera actually just let me add this default camera to my layout so it's really useful to have it here so let's go to somewhere I think here or I'm not sure really let's go to here maybe okay now let's get back to our default camera really quickly I saw one of the clones from this layer as you can see what is this thing that really snipping through this is definitely from this layer and let's see which one is this one Okay, let me find out what this uh, is from and just uh, come back to you quickly. Okay, so let's uh, see what's the problem here. I think um, this problem should be from one of these effectors. Let's just disable all of them and uh, see what basically caused that. Uh, yeah, our first plane vector looks like we need to adjust its keyframes a bit. So let's just... Um, uh, Go to that first keyframe and I'm just going to my layers and let's enable the effectors and see which one is what we want to change here I think this is the one isn't it if I move it in Z axis a bit there we go that solved our problem actually so okay that's great let's just uh, enable them again now let's uh, this is our first camera and uh, I think we are uh, good to continue uh, the next thing I want to set up is my second camera and uh, let's actually get back to our layers and uh, just uh, hide our effector so uh, we don't clutter up our scene for the second camera let's uh, uh, go to this main cloner first and let's just make sure that the level of detail is so low let's put something like 20 so we have a uh, snappy viewport let's uh, let me get back to my default camera and let's just go to uh, where our sort of second cloner comes into play as you can see about frame 120 124 okay so let's uh, create a new camera let's go into that camera uh, again for that camera I'm really going to uh, go uh, really really wide something like 12 and um, let's get closer to these guys uh, that's where they start I want to sort of like 120 maybe 5 here let's go to coordinates and try to rotate it and see how this is gonna look not that much let's go to something like this and now they comes into play uh, let's go to about 100 frame 225 F1 frame backward and now let's just uh, holding down alt and right click get back just down a bit and a bit more up go to something like this and I think we forgot to actually animate our camera at frame 125 so let's set a keyframe for our camera so we don't lose that first uh, position so I'm just going to my camera and uh, set a keyframe for the position and rotation make sure to disable the scale and let's go to frame about 225 okay G1 frame forward and let's alt right click and heading back and see 
what we want to do. Let's set another keyframe. I'm going to head back to this frame and let's see. Now uh, you have this motion. Uh, I think we can go a bit, maybe to something like 200. 40. Let's select this keyframe and change the key time to something to something like 240, and see where we are right now. Hit play, so they comes into place. Um, let's go to to uh, the frame 240. Go to the camera. I'm thinking of changing it this way this time, just a few degrees. And let's just go a bit higher and set the keyframe again. And let's see, we have just getting too close here for my eyes. Let me just go a bit higher position, something maybe like this, and set the keyframe again. I just think this is too close. Set the keyframe. Sorry, it looks like we're in the wrong um, frame. Again, let's go make sure to be in frame 240. And okay, let's go to this first frame. And let's change the volume maybe to something like positive 11. And now the a main problem for me, I really want to, let's go to C. Okay, this is not too bad. The only thing is you can see this very wide uh, open space here that we really need to take care of. And I think uh, we can adjust our first plane effector and I get a much more better result. Let me just go to my layers and uh, unhide my effectors. And let's go to our first plane effector. And what I'm going to do is this first plane effector. Let's see. So 251 is its second keyframe. And what I'm going to do is change the Uh, let's go to somewhere maybe here and set the keyframe on X and hopefully yeah that's much more better as you can see now how that keyframe works let's just uh, hit play and see what we have here So this uh, camera could stand to frame 240, so let's just change our timeline to 125, 240, and I can simply get back and see how it works. Okay, it's not too bad, especially it's not in real time, it will be much more quicker, and we can speed it up if we want. And. Now motion wise, I think I'm going to keep this gradual speeding up of our camera and slowing down at the end. Uh, even though we can, if we want, uh, right click and go to the uh, F curve of this camera and work with this um, uh, curves a bit let's just go to our f curve and change a uh, turn off this show all tracks so you can work based on the tracks uh, let me save my scene here uh, actually uh, so if we need to get back to this point but uh, so let's see it gradually start to move and it 
finally has a bit more of speed, maybe something like this. So this is kind of uh, can help the motion. Uh, select the two point hit H. So gradually and finally has more speed. Let's just do that for all of our axes and for the rotations even though it doesn't matter that much and if we can actually adjust the rotation and the position values that will definitely give us a much more better motion and uh, okay and let's see now what we got here okay very nice I think it's okay and uh, I uh, really uh, I can give you the freedom so you can do whatever you want with this camera and change the angle the way you want it to but let's uh, name this our camera 2 and the frames are 125 to 240 okay and uh, I think I'm going to save my uh, scene and uh, in the next lesson we are going to set up uh, our and uh, the rest of our cameras.